Buongiorno a tutti. Eh, sono Rafael Nadal. No. <ride> no, eh, buongiorno a tutti. Eh, allora, eh, il mio nome è Antonio Sánchez. Eh, eh, lavoro per Juniper Networks eh, fra, tra, da, da, molti, da molti anni. Eh, adesso lavoro nel gruppo di Contrail, Contrail è la soluzione SDN, SDN di, di, di Juniper. Allora, come, come la mia presentazione, come la mia presentazione è, è peggio che il mio italiano, eh, comincio con uno scherzo... Eh, come uh, so, uh, in that way I am sure that you will remember the presentation. So uh, the question is what existed before the SDN era? Uh, so here, I don't know if you have seen, there is a museum of, um, of networking uh, history. And before the SDN era, there was Massimo. Thanks to Massimo, uh, internet exists today in all, uh, everywhere, especially in Italy. And uh, so before the SDN era, if you look very carefully, before SDN, there was ISDN, the initial SDN era. <laughs> so that was the scherzo. Nobody laughed, thank you. <laughs> you can go back. <laughs> thank you, Marco. Okay, so, uh, so one of the things that have changed a lot in the, in the industry, I mean, every, every time we, we speak about SDN, we typically think about connectivity. How can I connect virtual workloads and uh, physical workloads inside my data center? How can I connect uh, my private cloud to the workloads in the, pu in the public cloud? How can I do it multi-tenant? And every, everybody thinks about connectivity. Connectivity is becoming a given now uh, with overlays and... Uh, And uh, there is one point of SDN that is very often uh, uh, forgotten, it's security. Uh, so SDN uh, is, adapt, is uh, bringing uh, tools to uh, deal with the evolution of network security. So I, th these are screenshots from a book that is Zero Trust Networks. I didn't formally ask for permission, but I guess that by doing some kind of uh, marketing to the book, uh, the authors won't uh, sue me. Uh, so, in the past, the most important thing for security was the concept of the concept of zone. So, in a, an enterprise, typically, was placing in the, in the DMZ the, 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 the militarized zone uh, email servers or web uh, proxies uh, that were uh, had to be exposed to the internet and also to the intranet. But um, nowadays, it's clear that. This security approach, and also uh, a very uh, common approach, is to uh, have a VPN. So basically, all the mobile uh, users that want to connect to the, an, an intranet just uh, appear with an SDN gateway. Sorry, with that. Sorry, with with, with a VPN gateway, the, an IPsec gateway or a SSL VPN gateway that is providing access to the intranet. But once you are in the intranet, the world is is yours. I mean, it's, you can do anything, right? So there is no, uh, this zone-based uh, security uh, uh, has inherently uh, the flow that the only thing that uh, you are, uh, the security infrastructure is looking at is where you are. If you, are, if you got there, then you can do everything you want. Uh, of course, there are um, some more advanced firewalling features, but, uh, but that's basically the paradigm that um, is changing in the sense that uh, today we don't really trust anyone. Uh, no matter if you are in this building, you can harm my business, right? So even, even though you are in my, in, my, in my company, even though you are in, uh, uh, probably working for my company, I still need to enforce some kind of security on you, and it doesn't depend on, when you are, on where you are. Uh, this is a challenge that uh, also needs to be solved in very simple uh, terms. So today I'm sleeping in an Airbnb, which is a loft that is very similar to this... Uh, to this space, so imagine there is a bedroom, uh, you open a door and there is a bedroom and a bathroom, so that's basically what I'm sleeping today, and I found some rules that I really liked. So the, the, the Airbnb has two rules. 
no smoking, no noise. If you want a, a sophisticated security approach to be efficient, it also has to be simple for whoever defines the rules. So what's the role of Contrail in the context of security? We want to interconnect uh, an extremely heterogeneous uh, set of workloads. So uh, it can be a remote branch office. If I start from the left, it can be a remote uh, branch office with uh, terminals uh, connected to a, or servers connected to a CPE. Or it can be at a workloads running in a data center as bare metal servers or as virtual machines or as, a, or as Linux containers. It can be workloads uh, running on telco uh, points of presence, for example, uh, virtual network functions or physical network functions that are enhancing the product offering of the, of the service provider. It can be workloads that are running on public clouds. So all this complexity, Contrail is taking care of it and is providing an abstraction on which to apply security. This abstraction is very simple. If you come from the network world, this abstraction is called port. So no matter if uh, the workload is connected through a, a container a virtual interface or through a virtual machine interface or through a bare metal server physical interface or VLAN, doesn't matter where, whether the workload is running on your private cloud or on your, on your public cloud, the point of connection of the workload to the network is called a port. And a port can be of many uh, different natures, but it has a common set of properties. So w what does a port have? A port typically has an IP address, right? And typically, it belongs to a, when we're talking about SDN, it belongs to a virtual network. A virtual network is, uh, provides a uh, first level of segmentation uh, whereby uh, two workloads can typically talk to each other if they are in the same virtual network, but not if they are not in different virtual networks. That's, that's the default. But that's, if you think about it, that's the zone-based approach, right? So it's, it's like the first uh, uh, level of security. And virtual networks are typically aggregated in projects. If you are used to OpenStack, uh, OpenStack has this project or tenant uh, concept. So in, uh, Contrail has exactly the same concept to the point that in the integration with OpenStack, uh, an OpenStack project uh, gets automatically discovered by Contrail. And, uh, and this is how we are grouping uh, uh, virtual networks together. And the very key thing is if you are thinking of modern-day modern security, think of uh, the biometric passport, for example. If I go to a passport uh, recognition office, uh, sorry, uh, to the police, and I show my passport or with, the, with the machine that checks all the biometrics, etc., uh, the guy is going to, uh, to check things like uh, the color of the passport or the nationality, uh, but there's also this biometric. This biometric is basically an, a series of attributes of my face or my look that are um, that need to match. They need to match in the passport and in the in the in the physical guy who's uh, showing the passport. So uh, in that sense, uh, in contrail security which is a, n a new extension of Contrail that we are releasing uh, in Contrail 4.1 that is released later this year, we are using the concept of tags. Tags are attributes of an object. This hierarchical structure whereby a port it belongs to a virtual network and a virtual network belongs to a project also uh, brings some inheritance in the sense that the attributes of a port is the, the um, combination of the attributes of the project to which it belongs to, to which it belongs, the attributes of the virtual network and the attributes that are assigned to the port itself. So you go from the less specific to the most specific. Uh, for example, in the demo that we are going to run today, the properties, uh, the um, application will, uh, as a tag, will be a property of the project. 
right? On the virtual network, in this particular demo, we're not going to assign any, any particular tag, but we could. And on the ports, we will assign some specific uh, attributes like a deployment, site, or tier. So what is the, what is the goal? What, what, do you, what do we want to achieve? So we are, we are saying that we want, we want to do a security simpler and security spanning a very heterogeneous workloads. So think about this scenario. We want to achieve um, a security uh, policy that performs all of the following. So here we are supposing that this project uh, this project uh, is for an application that is uh, whatever. It can be a credit card application or a human resource application, a billing application, content application, anything. Everything you see there is an application, right? It's a project that is an application. And it's ba uh, basically, it's, uh, the life of this application takes place in two sites, the U.S. and India. U.S. on the left, India on the right. Also, uh, the life cycle of the application has several uh, phases. So there is the development phase, the test phase, and the production. So you see from top to bottom, you have the dev, the test, and the production. We call these deployments. So we have three deployments, two sites. Uh, so uh, inside a given deployment and a given site, we can have an instance of the application, an incarnation of the application. In this case, it's a three-tier application. It's a very common uh, architecture where you have the web front-end, an application engine in the middle, and a database. And you have an incarnation of that in, every, uh, in, in some of the site colon deployment uh, that are in this project, right? But and we want to allow the communication only between the web tier and the app tier and between the up tier and the DB tier, but we don't want to allow communication between the web tier and the database tier. We only want to allow communication between web tier and up tier inside the same site and inside the same deployment. So for example, intra, inter uh, deployment is forbidden and inter site even for the same deployment production is forbidden too. So it's a relatively, it's very common, uh, and, but we're going to do it uh, in a very similar, in a very easy way. This is the policy. This is the policy that we need to apply. It's very, sim it's very simple. So we are saying from, we allow traffic from web tier to up tier. We allow traffic from the up tier to the database tier. And the deployment and site must match. This match things is the secret sauce. It's what makes, makes things simpler. Because without the match statement, we would have to create one policy for every single uh, deployment and every single site. We would see from site development, so from site US, de deployment dev, then blah, blah. From site uh, uh, US, de deployment production, etc. We would have to create at least four policies here. And if you have more projects using the same uh, architecture, we would need to create one policy f uh, and a high number of policies for each of them. So this match is basically what allows us to. Um, so if we go to the let me go to the problem statement. So in previous releases of uh, Contrilan of any. Uh, SDN controller, we basically have to create a policy per per site or per deployment. Uh, if you want, if we want to achieve this kind of security, where we enforce security within the site and deployment, and we don't want to, uh, we, we want to restrict some inter inter deployment communication. And with the new with the new uh, paradigm, we are having a single policy that is applied to all of them. That is applied to the whole application. So we reduce the complexity. So having less number of policies and also the manageability is better. If you, we want to do a change on the policy, we only need to change in one place. We don't need to change in 10 places, the correlated places, right? And the scalability, of course, is, is higher. So the idea is define once, deploy everywhere. Deploy everywhere means it really doesn't matter wh whether the 
the three tier incarnation is running on the on a private cloud with OpenStack or in a public cloud with Amazon Web Service or with uh, Kubernetes, Mesos, whatever, right? You just define the policy once you apply it. So let me go back one second. Um, so as I said here, uh, basically what we are going to do is we are going to tag the ports. Every web, uh, when you see this web or this uh, app thing or this DB thing, this is you can view this as a virtual machine or as a container. In previous uh, networking models, you would have the app uh, having two network interfaces. Could be VLANs, but it could, it could have one to the web and one to the database. Right, because uh, the way we were enforcing uh, security was based by zones or by VLANs. In this case, the app engine only needs to have one interface, because the, this evolved security uh, mechanism doesn't require you to have one interface per zone, because everything is taken care of by the tagging. So in this case, we have three deployments. We have one application, my application. We have three tiers, and we are tagging. So let's see how it looks like in Contrail. So now we are going to see the demo. OK, so uh, remember the tags. So here are the tags that are created, so application, deployment, etc. And you can see here that I can create a tag, a new tag at any time of, time, of type application tier deployment site, which are very meaningful. Uh, uh, keys for a de for a developer or for an application uh, uh, administrator, and also label you can we can do a free uh, a free form tag. So how are we at attaching the tags? As as I explained, I was uh, we are doing it in a hierarchical manner. So first on the project, its project has some tags. So we have the dev project, which is a deploy. Uh, which, which has deployment dev, application my application, deployment dev. We have the test project, OpenStack project. Application is my application, deployment is test. We have the prod project. So uh, the ports, so after the project we have the network, the virtual network. And for every project, we have a subnet. The IP address becomes a second class citizen in SDN. We don't really care about this, the IP address. It doesn't mean anything. It's just something that you need in order to have connectivity, but you don't really pay much attention to it. So every, every project, development, test, and prod has one, uh, one subnet. And we are not applying any tax to, this, to, the, to the virtual networks. We are attaching further tags to the ports. So if you see the ports for its project, uh, if we go to the test project, a test only happens in India, right? And the tier uh, is web, app, and DB, depending on the port, right? So we have these three VMs that are, all of them are in India, and they have three different tiers because they are basically an incarnation of the of the application. So this is how we are tagging. We will go back to tags. We can see the the tags that are so where they are applied to the which ports they are applied, but we don't really care about IP addresses. We have DNS in an SDN solution. So here, first thing I'm gonna do, here we have two hypervisors that are in the US. So we, we go back to uh, to OpenStack, uh, you can see there are two availability zones. One is in India, and one is in the U.S. You see these host names? Well, these are exactly the host names where I'm going to do the, the demo. I am, have to move this here. Yeah. Okay. So these are the two hypervisors. I'm really sorry, but I need to look at <laughs> that. Okay, so I'm going to connect to one VM.
I, I would like a um, mirror. I, I lost the mirror thing. So, Mary, I have to do it here. Mirror, mirror. Uh, there you go. Okay. Sorry. Now it's good. Now it's good. So, uh, if I do host name here, it says Web Production US. Web Production US. If you remember, Web Production US. US? Well, it's going to be here, production and web, okay? <laughs> Again, it's not mirroring, man. As soon as I go to the PowerPoint, anyway. Okay, so from web, prod US, I can ping web, sorry, uh, database, prod US. And it's working. I'm pinging from the web server to the database. I don't want that to happen. The web, ser the web, ser the web tier should only be able to ping the application tier, not the database tier. So I'm going to create a policy that is going to basically... Um, allow these two, but prevent these two from from occurring. Okay. So this is how I do it. In control. Sorry, mirroring is bro breaking every time I go from one to another. So here we go. Security. So I have some service groups here. I'm basically specifying the kind of traffic that is allowed from a web to an application tier, from an app to DB. So ICMP is al allowed on everyone, right? And then I'm going to define a policy. The policy is going to be very simple. The policy name is uh, Forza Italia. And I do the same in every country, <laughs> but I mean it. So web to app from tier web to, so this is stateful firewalling to tier app pass and also for a uh, the service up to DB, this kind of traffic, I'm going to allow it from, from tier up to tier DB. There is an implicit deny, which means that whatever I don't, uh, I don't explicitly allow is going to, is going to, uh, to be dropped, okay? So you, as you see, the ping is working right now. But as soon as I apply the policy, the ping, oh no, I didn't apply the policy. I just defined it, but in, now I need to really apply it. So I'm going to ap apply it to the application, Forza Milano, no, Forza Juve application and to this application I'm going to apply the policy for the Italia and now the ping stops okay so however I am in prod remember I am in prod web prod US and now I can ping the app in prod in India, and that sh sh and that shouldn't happen, right? It's working, shouldn't work. How can I change that? I go back to the definition of the firewall policy, to the term from web to app, and I say that the site must match. 
But look, I am here. I'm going to see match tags. The site must match. But I, I am not saying the, the 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 name of the site. Just say it has to match, and that's how I economize. Uh, I do the economy on number of policies. And now, as you can see, it is not working anymore. I can do the same for deployment. And finally, uh, last thing I'm going to show is this. I can go to monitor here, networking, and traffic groups. And the time is over. OK, but I just wanted to show you the um, old projects. OK. So you can see the traffic between its combination of application tier and uh, deployment and how what what flows are existing and you can click on them and see the traffic that there is etc so this is basically if you want to monitor an application and see what is going on you you, you can do it with just one click and you can filter you can in in 5.0 we will be able to uh, apply artificial intelligence and do uh, apply policies in a in a more sophisticated manner. So thank you very much, and sorry for the delay.